Hello, coming to you from, isn't this nice and cozy? Coming to you from sunny southwest Florida here in Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, thankfully, I'll be back on uh, Saturday. Um, you can see my face is sunburned. I've uh, been out uh, working on the fence and yard, and uh, it was really worn down. Honestly, I couldn't afford to come down here, but here I am anyway. Um, one of the things all of us have been dealing with in the past few years are these things of uh, people that are checking of facts. Kind of like a gopher sticks its head out of its hole in the ground. These uh, so-called checkers of facts never stuck their hole, their head out of the ground to tell everybody um, lie, maybe, uh, until the truth started coming out. And um, that's one issue, but there's something really huge connected to that, and we've been actually, all of us have been dealing with this. All our lives is a lot of the stuff we're taught to believe in is a complete and total lie. Uh, one huge one is that uh, you should have an open mind. And between having an open mind and having a closed mind, a closed mind is actually way better than an open mind. Open mind is susceptible to all sorts of lies and foolishness. It is the case that uh, highly intelligent yet unwise people are those that have open minds and if your mind's too open your brain's going to fall out a closed mind is way more healthy and way better for you than a uh, a closed mind is way more healthy and way better for you than an open mind what you actually need to have is a gatekeeper at the door to actually verify things via facts logic and wisdom whether the center holds whether or not to uh, consider it before totally accept totally accepting it people that just totally accept things blindly are those people that do have an open mind and these are the people that uh, believe the government you know safe and effective safe and effective one of the other big lies like the notion that uh, you know you need to have an open mind by the way i used to do a lot of skydiving and uh, the other one people would actually say on that front is that well minds need to operate like parachutes and they only work when they're open well, all modern parachutes and even old uh, circular parachutes used by the Army are mostly closed, actually. Um, current square, uh, rectangular parachutes are ram air design. They're open only at the front, but they're closed at the back. A uh, totally open mind is as bad as a totally open parachute. Totally open parachutes, no different than having no parachute at all. So I love it when people say that. Say, you need to have a mind like a parachute. It needs to be totally open. Totally open parachutes don't save lives. They end them. There's no such thing as a totally open uh, parachute. And the same is true of a mind. Anyway, we're told this nonsense that uh, that uh, facts don't lie. Or well, numbers don't lie. Excuse me, not facts, but uh, numbers don't lie. Well, numbers are just symbolic representations of things numbers neither lie nor they tell the truth. They say numbers don't lie. They certainly don't tell the truth at all. And there's a lot of different ways that uh, entities and these uh, checkers of facts, but we've been lied to about this front in our entire lives. So you have to be able to discern and discriminate data. And there's actually a long laundry list, but I'd like to mention six ways. Sunburn make my skin crawl a little bit. <laughs> I'm quite sunburned, actually, from working outside. No, not on the beach or anything like that. Literally working outside. I'm sure someone was going to think that. Um, one of the six primary ways, let me bring a little list in front of me here, is a small sample size. A lot of people that like to hide the truth from you, what they'll do is they'll uh, take selective uh, sample sizes. Uh, another one is that they'll use uh, huge meaningless numbers. It is the case, and I've said this many times, that nothing true is popular, and nothing popular is true. And uh, it is the case that those people that like to hide the truth from us will use these huge, huge numbers. Well, there's so many people that are into it, and you know, this person has a gazillion followers. And that's often used. It's like, well, how could this many people that follow this person be wrong? And I was actually... Uh, always attacked on that front uh, when I was doing camera reviews and other reviews. Like, well, this person over here, he has a hundred times more subscribers than you, and he doesn't agree with you. Well, one, that's a bandwagon fallacy. And this is one of the many countless ways that people will use numbers against you. But once again, this idea that numbers don't lie is not only a huge lie, it's an astronomically 
huge lie. It's even worse than the idea that uh, you need to have an open mind. No, you should have a gatekeeper at the mind that checks things before it lets people in. It's like having an open house, you know. If you go on a vacation, leave your house open, you're going to be robbed or blind, and your place is going to be destroyed or possibly burned down. So these huge meaningless numbers that were used, I'd say, yeah, this person has 100 times more followers than I do, but they're sponsored. Nothing they say can be trusted. They have a vested interest in lying to you. So, well, how could this person with so many subscribers be wrong? I say, what are their motives? What's their agenda? You know, what is driving them to say this? Is it pure altruism? You know, wanting to help people? It doesn't matter how many subscribers somebody has or doesn't have. But governments do that. Corporations do that. So big, meaningless numbers. Well, look at all these numbers. Another one is uh, correlation isn't causation. Um, it's like uh, people that, 80% of people that wake up with a headache were wearing shoes uh, when they went to bed. Like, well, they went to, sh to bed wearing shoes because they were drunk, for example. And you make an incorrect uh, conclusion that, well, therefore, wearing shoes when you fall asleep uh, gives you a headache. It's like, no, there's a correlation, but there's no causation there. That's another huge way people use numbers against you and me. And it works on stupid people. It even works on intelligent people. It doesn't, it even works on some wise people that don't actually connect the dots. The other one is uh, selectivity or selection bias. People will give you accurate numbers, but they won't tell you is where they sampled it from. It's not the case of a small sample size, it's of a selective sample size. That they'll only sample things that confirm their own biases, so selection bias. Another huge one is uh, visual tri I've seen this a lot. You've seen it a lot too, but you probably didn't notice it. It's a uh, visual trickery with graphs. For example, here's uh, one good one that I pulled up. It's uh, GDP uh, country by country versus GDP per capita. It compares uh, China versus Luxembourg. Luxembourg's a tiny little country. So well, the GDP by country on China is this huge graph and Luxembourg is basically non-existent, but if you look at the same graph, uh, instead of by country, rather by capita, China is really small and uh, Luxembourg is really, really huge. So you have visual trickery uh, via graphs. And uh, I see this all... The, look at this graph. The numbers don't lie. Numbers are symbolic representations of things. And depending on how you cherry pick, it's kind of like someone saying, you know, what sort of... I want to buy your land, but I only care about the lumber. And it's like, well, I'll, I'll bring you out uh, 10 trees to show you how great the lumber is. And the person might, uh, white oak is really valuable. Pine is not valuable at all, hardly. He'll like bring out 10 white oak trees. Like, look at this. Look at these 10 white oak trees that I pulled out of my, uh, my farm. You know, look at this. If you buy my farm, look at these huge white oak trees. Like, yeah, I did. But he selectively picked the white oak trees. He didn't take a blind sample. He's like, most of this guy's land is useless uh, pine trees, which uh, lumber yards generally don't pay hardly anything for. Um, so this is an arbitrary uh, cutoff of data and selective bias and sample. The list goes on and on and on. So this idea that numbers don't lie is a huge lie. And it's uh, really bad. And, and I'll give you one fact. This is actually really important. Um, this is a number that isn't lying. Tells you how bad it's actually getting in the world right now. In the United States, for example, typical household savings rate before all this garbage went down, you know, the coof and whatnot, the typical savings rate was 8 to 10% per household, 8 to 10%. During the coof, when basically everybody was due to their own stupidity, locked down, I was actually out more than normal. Um, the uh, household savings rate during the coof, when everybody was basically at home, not going anywhere or spending anyway, it was 30%. Now, the way it is now, real reflection of how bad it is and why we're about to enter a, uh, a depression, we're already in a recession, is this household savings rate is 3%. That is really, 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 really scary. That's like bad scary. So typical 8 to 10% during the coup was 30% because no one was going anywhere or traveling or, you know. And now it's 3%. It means everybody is destitute. They're trying to pay the bills, house insurance, car insurance, property taxes, regular taxes, gas, water, electric. They, they're they not saving anything. They're like borrowing. I mean, you want 
some real figures, that is really, really bad. So, anyway, I'll be back on Saturday. And I'm sorry for this cozy, you know, yes, I am sitting in a bedroom here in uh, my parents' Florida house, so working on the house. I'll catch you later. Yeah, I know I have this laptop reflecting up into my glasses. Sorry about that. I have a little tiny bit of notes that I was reading from. Catch you later. Man, it is really hot. It is hotter than Satan's Speedo down here. It's pretty hot.